Hi everybody, I got the new Lego Haunted House, part of their fairground collection as they should say. And what you have is a giant drop type of ride. And uh, let's crack into it and we'll give it a nice little overview. With this set being so mighty mighty, it comes with uh, 18 sets of bags. There's multiple bags uh, for most of those 18 counts. So, And uh, the booklet is quite substantial. And uh, normally I would want to just build the whole thing, but I like to savor my builds. So I'm taking up my time. And uh, what I've got here is the first five bags. So it takes you five bags to get to this point. And what you'll see is you essentially now have the entire base structure. Uh, so it's four of these 16 by 16 plates. That adds up to 32 by 32. Uh, but instead of it just being one solid 32 by 32, they've split it up into these four plates. And that allows you to expand it, open it up, take a peek at the inside, and uh, play more with it as opposed to it being uh, possibly it could have been a, a modular build where you could take the top story off. But uh, with this thing's working in inner you know, mechanism, that wasn't going to be an option. So this is a great... Uh, I like this concept because I really like to be able to get into things. Uh, you'll notice right off the bat though uh, that this is a accessible ride. Since this is an amusement park ride, there are stairs and there is a ramp for the uh, included figure that comes with a wheelchair. So it's an accessible ride. So that's kind of neat. Uh, we'll crack in here. I'm, we wasn't really going to spend too much time at this point of the build, but I did want to take the opportunity since the next bag, bag six, starts to cover up this stuff. It starts to put a little veneer over it and make the elevator shaft a little bit more detailed, so it hides some of the goodies. And uh, I wanted to take this chance to see how, uh, to show how the interior braking mechanism. So since this is a giant drop ride, there's going to be an elevator that's going to come careening from about two feet up and come crashing down. Well, you don't want your Lego set to just keep crashing. Uh, what that would do is eventually, I mean, probably right away, it would just, the elevator would uh, break apart, you'd have the whole thing would start losing its integrity. Uh, so what you needed to do is slow down and come to a nice relaxing halt. And uh, that's what they've achieved. And what they do uh, to get there is uh, a series of things. We'll start off, there's these little rubber dampers at the very bottom. Those are those little, uh, one by two Lego, uh, well, Technic sort of axle, axle pieces. They're flexible and uh, they have a little bit of cush. So those are their kind of last dish effort just to make sure that the, when the elevator car hits, it doesn't have any percussion, doesn't uh, violently smack the bottom. The main system that slows it down though is the flywheel system. And that is achieved with this. So what you got here is what you want to do is take the energy out of the falling car and put it somewhere else. You want to transfer that energy into something else, anything else will do. Uh, in this case, we don't want the car to smash down, so we want to slow it down. And what they've got is this uh, sort of flywheel system. So you're going to have these rubberized wheels on the edge here, and it's going to graze the car. Uh, but this on its own, if these were just little wheels, the car would kind of come through, I think at a pretty reasonable clip, because it could just spin these wheels real fast, these don't wouldn't provide too much resistance and uh, therefore it would still careen pretty violently. So what they need to then do is transfer this rotational energy into something else and that's what's hiding in the back. That is the flywheel assembly. We'll flip this around real quick. Here you have it. In the back you have the flywheels. So these are larger uh, Technic looking wheels and uh, they got the rubberized coating on them and that's going to give them some outer uh, outer weight the farther the weight is on the outside, the better a flywheel is going to work. In order to get these spinning, you're essentially absorbing energy from the falling car. So it's going to take its kinetic energy and transfer it to the wheels. What do you got next? Um, well, if we were to take those wheels and just directly drive them straight to the uh, flywheel, you would get less of an effect. You'd still have some, but you'd get less of an effect. So what they want to do here is get more of that uh, transfer of energy. They want to give the flywheel power. They want it to overpower the falling car so it takes more energy to get the flywheel going. And to do that, uh, you're basically you're, you're going to be creating more resistance on this end by giving the advantage of power through the gear ratio to the flywheel. 
you're gonna go from a small gear to a big gear. That means it takes a lot of spins to get this thing to spin once. I think it's about a four to one ratio. So that gives the flywheel the advantage of power. Uh, essentially, you always have this ratio or this uh, trade-off between gearing. You can either gear towards speed or gear towards power. You can't have both. So that was just an interlude. Uh, let's finish this thing off. And now, welcome to the home tree. So now that we have the entire haunted house built, and as you can see it is so large, I'm having a hard time getting it into a single frame. And therefore what we'll do is we'll do we'll focus on little subset areas of it at a time. Um, here from the exterior, it is a very large, massive, rather impressive looking house, but when you actually come through building it, you'll see that all of this is just one surface. There's no uh, there is this protrudes out that gives it some depth that is very flat. No depth there. There's some uh, or some texture here and some texture there, but it kind of gives you the feeling that it's a, a bit more flat and stale uh, than maybe some of the other modular houses or you know buildings. The uh, the stained glass little area here is quite nice. The um, the windows and the color scheme is is a bit dull uh, with the uh, the grays, greens, and browns. It at least sticks to a theme, and that's appreciated. Um, there is a, a secret little feature with this, and I'll have to show that on the inside as well, but if you push it, something happens on the inside. And then of course there's this other cool feature where if you turn this knob, it opens and closes the doors. So those are the main things on the outside. You obviously have a little graveyard area, and uh, but while, this is, uh, while we're still on the outside, I'm going to reach the back, crank them up to the top, and say... Hello! Goodbye! <laughs> they go down so fast. It's so lickety split and it's quite wonderful to see um, see them appearing at that little door at the top and then uh, and then careening out of control at the bottom. So we're going to open this sucker up. As you've seen probably plenty of promotional photos for this set. We probably don't need to dive into every aspect of it. We'll look at the uh, this nice little area here. This is uh, the gearing that opens and closes this door is done where there is just friction pins holding these uh, some of the assembly together which means that if you want if you were to um, keep twisting you can actually kind of force the doors without um, doing any damage to the gearing mechanism or anything and now that one's closed you just keep turning the gear uh, turning the handle and it will reset them you'll see the candles open and close with it uh, and the candelabra itself here is actually hanging from the pole that crosses over little features like the guy, the skeleton, some sort of ritualistic, I don't know, cup of blood, that kind of a thing. There's some other uh, ritualistic items throughout. There's actually, um, as a bit of an unusual perk for this set, in the instructions it will, it has little blips where it actually writes in English um, little descriptions of some of these things. I won't ruin it for you, most of them are pretty nonsensical. So here, here's the button. And on the inside what that does is lights up one of those lighted bricks and you'll see the uh, the spooky sphinx, which I guess is more likely uh, a haunted pharaoh, not necessarily the sphinx. Um, what they've done here is there's just uh, one of those big panes of glass, much like this, it's got a print on it. And then that's it, and then behind it is another smaller pane uh, of glass, or plastic of course, and it has the printed ferrule on it. And all it's doing is shooting light through the black printed ferrule, which is casting a shadow and illuminating only the red area. So, that's uh, neat. It's not, I thought it was actually done with more like a watermark effect when I uh, saw the promo material, and now that I see that it's actually kind of a projection of a shadow, that's pretty impressive. The builds for the organ, that just pops right out. You can just add, you know, you build that separate and then throw it in. There's a, mo you know, an obelisk. There's nothing too fancy about it. Ticket taker guy, of course the entrance. This is kind of weird. The, uh, the chimney's right here, so the unfortunate fireplace gets split into two. Kind of imagine it. Let's see if we can squeeze a peek in. There. You can see it sort of shut there. But for the most part, that fireplace is never going to be viewed that way. 
you've got the ride. This is obviously the giant drop ride. Inside this ride is a little car. And so since you can't pull the car, the whole elevator contraption out, they've made it so this little car, little vehicle for the passengers, uh, just clicks in with one little click. And then that goes into this elevator car. So we'll come to the side here and you'll see the controls. You'll have the main crank, which I'll just do. It is ratcheted, so there's a little ratchet here that stops it from going backwards. I do believe if you pulled it out, you could you could just do that and uh, pull the ratchet out and then it would go in reverse. But they have another clever way. Oh, we can see here we're cranking it up. The car is going up to the rear. At the same time, there's this tread piece that's going down. The tread piece is what's actually lifting the the vehicle up. There's one more of these little tread pieces on the inside. I think you can kind of see it through the glass here. You see the tread going by? It's the gray one. It's lifting up a little protrusion on the vehicle and that's it. Now you can pull it all the way to the top and it will uh, just pull the tread out from the car and uh, it'll drop it. The alternative option is you can pull it up to any height such as this one, and instead of just pulling this ratchet out, you can flip the switch and it will disengage the gearing from that ratchet. And that's all that really does, is it's using a little cam setup, the cam, sorry, a clutch setup, basically, down there. And when you want to drop it, you can just disengage from the clutch. The way that it opens the door is kind of neat as well. It's uh, all a very passive system. This isn't geared at all. It's just using something bumps into this and pushes it, starts pushing it a little bit. And then when it gets to this point, it push the, uh, the vehicle starts pushing on that, pushing the doors in even further. While they're being pushed out, they're also being lifted up because there's a, uh, a one by four slope here. So it glides it upwards, and then when the vehicle leaves, it just uses gravity to slide back down that slope and uh, shut. And since they're both going at the same time, and there's a big exuberance of energy going on, you know, commotion, uh, they shut pretty good. They close almost perfectly every time. So building this takes a little while, and one of the things that they do to you, which I felt I had to cheat. You know, normally I follow these directions perfectly, but I had to jump to the end. And that's because the last bag they give you is the parts to build the elevator. So you build this whole glorious thing, you nice giant drop ride. You can start to see where functions are going to work. You want to test it out. You want to put it just when you, when, it, when you build up to this point, you want to put the car in and drop it and see how the flywheel system works. But it doesn't give you, uh, if you follow the directions perfectly, you won't get to do that. So, um... What I did is I actually got to this point in the build and I uh, broke ranks and I went to the end and I opened up that last bag, number 18 I think it was, and I built the car and that way I could start dropping it in and seeing how it worked. And then when I built more of the tower I would drop it from a higher height. Um, so let's take a peek at that car. You can actually just pull these things off. This is one of the last steps you do is put these little uh, facades in that uh, hold the car in at the, at the bottom. You'll see that the car here has wheels on these sides and, uh, and now wheels going the other way, of course. So it glides down this channel uh, using these little wheels to help make it uh, keep it so it doesn't get tilted and sideways and whatnot. And the flywheels, these, this, uh, let's say there's eight here and there's eight there, they actually go right through the center here. And this is interesting. You can see, I haven't taken this apart until just now, and I played with this a ton. You can see that some of the rubber of those flywheels is uh, a, being abraced, abraced off. It's, uh, it's actually rubbing off onto it and uh, degrading these wheels. So over time, I think these wheels will not uh, continue to function as well, and you might have to go out and buy replacement wheels. That's unusual for LEGO. LEGO usually wants their product to continue to work, per, you know, endlessly but um, these wheels are definitely going to break down over time. So that's the little car. You would stick that back in as your last sort of steps and then snap these on. One other nice feature of the build is that they have this tiny little camera here 
and uh, it's sitting off in no man's land for no reason. You can't, you know, until you close, until you close this up, and at that point you'll see that that little camera is looking straight up through that big pane of glass and uh, so as an amusement park ride it has the option of taking pictures of the passengers. Uh, with that what I'm going to do is close it up. I do have the motor, the motors and the ability to do the power up. Uh, the motors for this thing are off, sold out online but the stores and the malls if you're willing to put on a mask and brave it and uh, try to stay away from people as best as possible you can go into the stores at the mall and uh, try your best to hopefully find some of these motors. There's not a lot of specific directions um, on how to set this up and that was one of the sad things with the app. The app doesn't sit there and remind you exactly which motor goes where. You have to kind of look at the uh, at the actual instructions. This motor, uh, this is the B motor but it's the one that goes on to this little area here which is the actual hoist and lifts it up and then this motor requires you to take off that handle and you'd stick it on and stick that on there. This one gets clunky. It makes noises and uh, and it kind of grinds around and you're like, oh, did I put these motors on wrong? Uh, did I break something? And uh, then what it'll do is it'll uh, use the motors to lift up the car and drop it at different heights. Okay, so let's check out the app. What you have here is these, uh, this is the Lego Power Up app. I'm on an Android phone here. And uh, it gives you a choice of a handful of Power Up Lego sets that they have a profile for. This is obviously the Haunted House, so I chose that. And uh, I've turned on the Power Up block in the back, and that uh, connects to Bluetooth. And when it is connected, it will show you right here. Now what I'll do is we'll test out some of its features. Uh, this button will raise the car up to the big pane of glass up there that is for the photo taking, so let's try that out. And it makes a little photo sound, so it sounds like you just took their photo uh, because of the little fake camera. Then if we press this button, it should take it all the way up to the top where the doors open. And you should just let it sit there and just sort of taunt your passengers. And then if you press this button here with the skull, yes, indeed, it drops them all the way down. All right, it's going to lift it. I'm going to take it all the way up to the top. This is just by pressing the skull, so it skips all the intermediate steps. It's going to drop them all the way down. All right, now what we'll do is we'll watch the landing. You guys can get a nice visual of the soft landing. I'll try to follow it with the camera a little bit. All right, it's going to go up. That's nice. All right, I'm going to supersede it and go down here. And a nice little landing. That was wonderful. You can see the the uh, app adds some nice music to the whole mix, and that's kind of enjoyable. And there's some little buttons that just do some graphics on the screen. Uh, so I think that's if you wanted to take it, let's say, to the camera level. And then you want to disengage the and drop it from there. So the app adds some nice quality to it. Uh, I have had the motors glitch out, uh, the mechanism glitch pretty badly. Uh, the chain will slip on that big gear and, uh, and it can't uh, raise the car. You just hear a bunch of click, click, clicks. And um, that's, yep, here we go. And right now the chain's just slipping on the back there. And I know I built this thing to the letter. And uh, I made sure that all the moving parts move nice and smoothly but this is what I mean where if you're doing this with the motors it's unforgiving whereas if you did it with your hand you have the ability to uh, notice that it's slipping real quick and you can put your hand on there and push the, make sure that the chain is securely attached to those gears um, I enjoy adding the app and my kids love to hit the buttons a couple times but uh, I still also just like to crank it there's a nice satisfying feel to the crank so that was a quick tour of the app so there we have it this is the haunted house from the fairground collection and uh, it's a quite wonderful set it's got a really great mechanism and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video and have a great day and take care bye bye ah!